Yeah, so that talk sort of um, stemmed out of the TED talk that I gave on owning your body's data. And it's really challenging people to think about how they can use data that they collect about their bodies to help make better health decisions. Um, and so ways that you can use like your temperature data or your heart rate data, or what does this data say over time? What does it say about your body's health? And really challenging the audience to get excited about looking at that data. We have so many um, devices that collect data automatically for us, and often we don't pause long enough to actually look at that historical data. And so that was what the talk was about today. Like, here's what you can find when you actually sit down and look at that data. Well, what's the most important data you think people should be collecting about themselves? Well, definitely not your weight, because <laughs> I don't want to know what that is every day. Um, it depends. You know, I think for women who are in the fertile years of life, taking your daily waking temperature can tell you when your body's fertile, when you're ovulating. It can, um, so, so that information could give women during that time period really critical um, information. But in general, I think it's just a matter of being aware of um, of how your body is changing. So for some people, maybe it's your blood pressure or your blood sugar. If you have high blood pressure or high blood sugar, um, those things become really critical to keep an eye on. And, um, and I really encourage people, whatever data they take, to be active in the understanding of and interpretation of the data. So it's not like if you take this data, you'll be healthy, and you'll, you'll live to 100. It's really a matter of challenging people to own the data that they have and get excited about understanding the data that, that they are taking. So. I think there's a lot of ways to get into data science. Uh, math is one of them, but there's also statistics or physics. And I would say that, especially for the field that I'm currently in, which is at the intersection of machine learning, data science on the one hand, and biology and health on the other, one can um, get there from biology or medicine as well. But what I think is important is not to shy away from the more mathematically oriented courses in whatever major you're in, because that foundation is a really strong one. There's a lot of people out there who are basically lightweight consumers of, of data science and they don't really understand how the methods that they're uh, deploying, how they work, and that limits them in their ability to advance the field and come up with new methods um, that are m better suited, perhaps, to the problems that they're tackling. So I think it's totally fine, and in fact, there's a lot of value to coming into data science from fields other than math or computer science, but I think taking courses in those fields, even while you're majoring in whatever field you're interested in, is going to make you a much better person who lives at that intersection. So I think one of the key things about the ethics panel here at WIDS this morning was that, first of all, it started the day, which is a good sign. It, it shouldn't be a separate topic of discussion. We need this conversation about values, about what we're trying to build for, who we're trying to protect, how we're trying to recognize individual human agency. That has to be built in throughout data science. So it's a good start to have a panel about it at the beginning of the conference, but I'm hopeful that the rest of the conversation will not leave it behind. We talked about the fact that um, just as civil society is now dependent on these digital systems that it doesn't control, data scientists are building data sets and algorithmic forms of analyses that are, both of those two things are just encoded sets of values. And if you try to have a conversation about that at just the math level, you're going to miss the social level. You're going to miss the fact that that's humanity you're talking about. So it needs to really be integrated throughout the process. Right. Talking about the values of what you're manipulating and the values of the world that you're releasing these tools into. Yeah, so at Intuit, um, we are a champion of gender diversity and also all sorts of diversity. And when we first learned about WIDS, we said we need to be um, a champion of the Women in Data Science Conference because for me personally, oftentimes when I'm in a room um, going over technical details, I'm often the only woman. And not just that, I'm often the only woman executive. And so part of the sponsorship is to create this community of women, very technical women in this field, to share our work together, to build this community, and also to show the great diversity of work that's going on across the field of data science. 
So, uh, so for first of all, uh, um, at Jane, we uh, we truly believe in the vision that we are working towards, which is really creating econo economic opportunity for every member of the global workforce. And if you're kind of starting from that and thinking about that is our uh, sort of the, th the 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 axiom that we're working towards, and then thinking about how you can do that, and then obviously the the sort of the table stake or just the the um, uh, the, the fundamental thing that we have to start with is to be able to preserve the privacy of our members as we are leveraging the data that our members entrust with us, right? So how can we do that? We have some early effort in, in, in using and developing differential privacy uh, as a technique for us to do a lot better with regarding preserving that privacy as we are leveraging the data. Um, but also at the same time, it doesn't end there, right? Because you're thinking about uh, creating opportunity. It's not just about let's preserve the privacy, but also when we are leveraging the data, how can we leverage the data in a way that is able to create opportunity in a fair way? Uh, so, so there is also a lot of effort that we're having uh, with regarding how can we do that and what does fairness mean? Uh, what are the ways we can actually turn some of the key concepts that we have into action that is really able to drive the way we develop product, the way that we're thinking about responsible design, and the way that we build our algorithms, you know, uh, the way that we measure in every single dimension.